Thank you for checking out our podcast. On this podcast, we discuss sensitive topics. And uh, I just wanted to let you know, there's a lot of topics that most people do not want to speak on. It can be religious topics, topics about politics, family issues, race, and personal history. On this podcast, you will hear different topics discussed that might be sensitive to the workplace, sensitive to a doctor's office. These are personal experiences between Drake and Shan. And if anything discussed may personally offend you, our apologies, but these are personal experiences. Everyone's experiences may be a bit different. If you would like to share your thoughts, you can email shan at she gets it pod at gmail.com and if you have any questions about what was discussed you can also find drake on everything culture.com my at is at shanby podden drake's at is at everything culture we appreciate you listening and i hope when you listen to this episode you learn something you gain thought and you find value Thank you for checking out She Gets a Pod. We back. We back and we black. Welcome to She Gets a Pod and Everything Culture with Drake. My name is Shan. This is episode five. And I know y'all getting y'all supplies ready because this week is Thanksgiving, aka things taken. Okay, this is dropping um eleven twenty. All right. Get it get into it. Get into it, Drake. Okay. You're flying. Hey. Listen. It's flying by. Listen. Okay. Not ready. We are here. Okay. Over here before we know it. Okay. We are here. And um this is a uh on time one, like our on time God, okay? Because we don't want to have you at the table talking crazy. Mm. Right? Especially if you're invited by a friend or a family member to a different cultures, things taken Thanksgiving, okay? Where the Mac touch the yams, okay? We want to make sure that... Hold on, hold on. Where we do dressing, not stuffing. Continue. Oh. Oh. Continue. <laughs> All right. So um, we're talking about racial labeling promoting racism aka the prejudice and discrimination on black people all right and um y'all should be familiar with the doll test that um showed the effects of racism with black children um anti-black anything is not helping black people We see that every day in social media, on the news, in person, in the grocery store, at work. Um, The microaggressions are not helping Black people. The barriers we give ourselves with skin color and race in America is an ongoing trying thing. Um, Individually being erased and lump sum into assumptions of who we are by how we look, how we dress, what communities we live in and work in, all of those fall under racial labeling and the way that um, in the media, it promotes racism for other people to feel comfortable on how they treat us. And that's what I wanna talk about today. Um, Yes, so um, that does also uh, fall into people who have ethnic names Mm. and, 50% of those people don't get callbacks from corporate jobs because of their names. So some people may use their middle name that sounds a bit more American-esque and uh, maybe passing in order to get jobs. And having this sense of not belonging places or not feeling comfortable doing everything, everyday things like walking in a park, your child selling Girl Scout cookies outside. Lemonade, uh, candy, water, what? just uh, being black. 
Let's, let's hey. get to it, Chan. Like, like hey. you, you walking like, see, I appreciate you. You be hey, holding a hand. Up. I'm trying to step y'all in to make sure I'm not missing anything that's going on. And I'm on. like, I'm in the I'm kicking y'all in the back. You know what we're talking about. Y'all so, know what we're talking about. We want to talk about all of this. So Drake and I are going to explore it. Um, if this does not pertain to you and you are not doing these things, great. I love it. Okay. Share the, just share, the, share it. Still share the episode. Educate your family, educate your grandparents, educate the people that you work with, educate your community, educate the uh, store owners, educate people to understand that the things that you think in your mind, keep them there. The things that you say at your mouth have responsibility with, okay? And uh, that's what I want to talk about this episode. Look, 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 you know, everything we're talking about right here is why I love doing the makings of you. Mm. You know, one of the, the core segments of everything culture. Because even though we look a certain way, get to know me. Mm -hmm. Just don't judge me for what I look like, okay? Right. And that's the whole thing about it. Like, stereotyping or what, what's the term you, you we're using? Um, racial, what does it call it? Racial labeling. Racial labeling. Racial profiling. All these things going hand in hand. Um, but it's a very lazy thing to do. Yeah. But the thing is for us to really get to know one another, just have a casual conversation. I have family. I have loved ones. I have things to do. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking forward to this conversation, Shan. I'm looking forward to it. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of having to have this conversation. <laughs> and... and, and Hey, I understand. We should get paid for it. Listen, okay. Because what you said earlier, like with the job thing, you know, I'm in the human resources uh, field. I worked in child welfare. Mm -hmm. It's so unique that you said people will use their middle name over their first name. Baby, people would change their whole name around. Like, my name is Brandon. You feel me? My first and last name, like, is very professional, okay? Mm -hmm. You Google my name, you will see a lot of white people through it, too. Mm -hmm. I've got a very racial fluid or eth ethnic fluid name, okay? Mm -hmm. But my middle name, that D, oh, it's very cultural. Let's say that, very cultural. Okay. So not only that, and my mother did that intentionally. Mm -hmm. She wanted me to maintain my identity of who I come from and, you know, the flavor and style, the uniqueness that I am. But just in case my son to get a job or have a, to survive in this world, I got to give him more of a caucus name. Yeah. So we that, these are things that we consider and we have to talk about. And once again, we could talk about numerous. This not just pertains to the black community, but mm -hmm. today on this episode, we're talking okay. about black. the black community. Okay, so it, it's I said it a moment ago, but racial profiling, racial um, labeling. labeling, stereotyping is just lazy. Yeah, it's truly lazy. What's better than if I just see one person? Oh, they're all like that. Just that mindset, just saying they're all like that is so disingenuous, lazy, and disrespectful. Because mm -hmm. we all can do it. But towards Black people, you're trying to create us to be a monolith <clears throat> or truly a spectrum is so wild. You know, even that my, the, the term, can I say one of the one terms that I hate the most? Can I say it? Y'all okay? Y'all okay? Can I say it? You're not like the others. Oh! Ooh, I have I have that on my list. When I tell you, I've heard that more times than I wanted to hear in my lifetime. Being one of us. Like, I'm talking about since our elementary, middle school. From, mm -hmm. from, and, and it's people that look like really admire me. Look, like, Drake, I mean, even when I was going to leave to go to a different house, I was going to go to the predominantly black high school. Mm hmm. And I, I was going to the predominantly white high school that fed into the predominantly white. Uh, I was going to the predominantly white middle school that fed into the predominantly white high school. And when they found out I was leaving, they're like, "Not you, no." 
Mm-hmm. You're you're the type we like. This is what these counselors were saying. Hmm. My um 10th grade biology teacher, I can't even remember his name. He was like, Chantal, you come up here and you sit at the front because you're not like them in the back with that riffraff. You come up here. Homie thought he was giving me a compliment. But majority of all the kids in the back were the black students who um, black focus came to class with no pencil, no paper, chit chatting. And it was kind of like, he was one of those teachers where he just knew like, it's more problems with me trying to correct them. And I'd rather separate the class and teach the class that's here to learn. And that's how he taught that class. It's like he gave up. He showed that he gave up on the kids in the back and he was okay with it. And y'all up here, I'm going to teach y'all. Mm. See, that, and that's a very unique mindset because I always come from if, whew, this is hard for me to say because it, 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 it's very a fine line to me. But with, with the tiling and labeling, like, I'm still black. I'm still, even black was considered disrespectful to a point because it was disrespect label with it. Mm-hmm. And, but the mindset, how they, because once again, race is not real. Once again, everybody, is, it's no such, race is completely made up. Okay. Racism is real, but race is fake. Race was created so racism could exist. Am mm-hmm. I making sense? Because once again, it was to make people of lower income uh, at certain times of uh, people who were serving service um in different servitude to create slavery of black people was getting created so they won't be labeled as more wealthy and have pride for them. So, oh, their pride can't come compared to other white people at that time, and it's still to this day. But it's like, if you feel comfortable dismissing someone for something that's completely made up, Mm -hmm. completely made up, Mm -hmm. that's to justify capitalism and how to keep both y'all under the wealthy's foot, the ones in power. Separation. Mm -hmm. It was another way for us to separate each other, okay? So, and, and the system that has been created that the stereotypes come from, oh, Look, I feel Tony so much better since I'm eating again and I prayed. <laughs> Have you heard, you know what was the first black sitcom? Shan, audience. Hold on, we're gonna give them a second. Wait! We'll I give everybody a second. Do y'all know the first black sitcom? Um was it uh the Jeffersons? Lows, but no, we got to go back maybe a couple more decades, maybe three more decades. Yeah, I might not know it. It Am started with a. It started from a radio show with the same name. First all black sitcom. I don't know it. Oh, so you got so you got to listen to everything culture, and you got to follow us during Black History Month. But Amos and Andy. Okay, I heard of that, but I never heard. You heard? Okay. Ooh. Ooh. I'm about to get emotional. Mm. Because, you know, I can take it light, but I take it serious. Mm. Amos and Andy was the first full black sitcom. Had black, you know, in ta- had the black protagonist, him and his friends. Um, they had a black sheriff, black mayor, all black town. All black sitcom. Before the Jeffersons, before um, Sanford and Son, that's before, my show. Before Julia, okay, you know I I did my history on this, but you know Amos, you know, but I remember I mentioned Amos and Andy come from the radio show, like before television, like this is they, you know, they did things on radio. Mm-hmm. They had shows on radio. You know who Amos and Andy was initially? No. Two white men. What? A lot of the stereotypes and behaviors that black people still hold today was created by white people. Wait. 
was that um what helped create that um movie that they were trying to push out where that white man would act like a black woman on radio possibly yes possibly okay. yeah okay. possible because amos and andy um when the actual show came out mm-hmm. like a lot of black people that saw television once again when you see what if just like what we see with rappers and behaviors and things right now and that's when people get so upset about when we talk about industry plants tiktok um <laughs> everybody don't act like that that's not part of us yeah we don't do all that you know, it, 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 like but who came first was it an art or reality or was it reality of the art you know mm-hmm. but when the amos and andy dropped you know the naacp boycotted it to the point they was taking off we gave you a black television show yeah. but you built this television show over stereotypes that you created about us right it's basically black face on the mic correct yeah. then we actually give we made this image and now you go portray it mm. so it kind of think what is really real what we have what do we really do how do we really act where did it really start because you hear a lot of, you know, once again, we had, we're not, once again, we're not perfect. Right. But a lot of things that we act and portray, did you see it on television first? Or did you actually see it in your community first? Right. So with Amos and Andy showing those stereotypes and the, this labeling, saying that we're not, we're unintelligent, mm-hmm. saying that we're violent, saying these that. And when I'm, we look at the history, it's like y'all are not the most intelligent. We completely think, and y'all are the most, some of the most violent people, not only in this country, but in this world. Okay. And from all cultures. Those. But if you look at propaganda, oh, yes. who's the main one? And like with other countries, who they try to portray as being the most violent people. You feel me? That I, I'm just pointing out that. Even driving a car, like when I was in college, I had, not even college, when I worked at CPS, I drove a red Chevrolet Impala, Mm -hmm. swinging that thing. Candy was her name, okay? You know, I could be in a suit and a tie, leaving court, going to visit one of my kids while they're in the foster home to mentor them, check on them. With my Masonic bumper stickers and my work while I work at working with kids bumper sticker and get pulled over. Mm. But what am I getting pulled over for? Yeah. Oh, where you been? Where you going? Hey, work in my license registration. What's up? What, why are you pulling me? You, you, what am I being pulled over for? Oh, well, it's been, you know, some break ins and cars, this, this, this. Do you see what I'm wearing? I got all white and black on. Mm-hmm. Suit and tie. Mm-hmm. You think I'm breaking in the cars, man? Right. Racial labeling, racial profiling. The, yeah. the term thug is a, what we know what that means. Mm-hmm. The, the, the term um I, I I didn't even talk about the term of even ghetto. Ghetto is not our term. Ghetto come from um, the Jewish background, if I'm not mistaken. Come on, root word. Okay. Yeah. But it's been coined for us to be disrespectful and demeaning to things. Okay. It's just so many things that we're looked at as being less than or more still disrespected to this day and some of us have taken pride in those things because mm-hmm. i think taking pride in those things is a point of survival or you know i hate to say assimilation at time too mm-hmm. but that's why we have to talk about it's the makings of you know who you are and you know where you come from it, it's something that i want to be very 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 mindful of so when people call you, who determines what you who you are in life and by what they say and how they're going to depict you before you when you're just a child? Uh, I'm gonna say this and I'll let you slide on the shan. 
one of the most one of the, the my first time crying as a CPS caseworker. Did I ever tell you this story? I love that answer. Um, little boy, he was uh, multiracial, and he was going to go to a family, um, a Hispanic family, if I'm not mistaken. And he looked like a little Mexican boy. He looked like just a little biracial baby. That's what he looked like. Big fat cheeks, slobbering, just all this. And he turned this is like the day he had to be moved out of his home because he was in a Latin home or a Hispanic home. He got to be moved to a different home. And when I had him in my office, it was his birthday. The day that these this home said they can't have him any longer, it was his birthday. So I was able to, you know, I call around. If you know how the system works, you got to put in a statewide intake. They got to put a go around. They got to put a alert out. Like, hey, find this baby. This baby need a home. Yeah. Place in Waco. It was like, bet. We want him. We love him. He's gorgeous. He's beautiful. He have any special needs? Not at all. He just slobber all damn day. Mm-hmm. Okay, we want him. Cool. Put the paper in. We about to go. I'm catch. I'm about to catch a flight to wake up with a little baby boy one year ago. I don't have kids. I don't know nothing about no baby. Yeah. I don't know nothing about no baby. I don't know change no diaper. Well, okay, mm-hmm. but we gonna do it. Foster parent called me. Not the foster. Not the foster agency. The foster parent called me. Oh, you told me this. And she's like, "What is he mixed with?" Oh, me being. Just a naive, young social worker, case worker, whatever. Like, oh, he's uh, white and black. And I think his mother may be biracial, but, you know, he's white and black. She's like, okay. My supervisor get a call from the case the case manager, the foster agency, saying, oh, the foster parents backed out because she has a surgery coming up. No, it's because he's black. So me being the person I, I call and that's she talking to her, she was like, Yeah, after you told me he was mixed with black, we decided not to have him. You know, he's gonna grow up and you know, he's gonna start looking different and maybe acting different. I said, Acting what? Yeah. What you mean by that? Mm-hmm. Man, that was a long time ago and it still hit me. Still hit me, still hit me. Because once again, little cute baby i'm talking about didn't have a care in the world just want to eat slip and sleep and poop and, and babble that's it mm. and they didn't want him because he was mixed with black so think about us and think about your children who are black presenting okay and how the type of challenges we're going to have in this world already that's what that racial labeling and that stereotyping and how the type of effect that it has on us and then we have a certain reaction of how people may treat us where we can't express ourselves comfortably and with the walk on eggshells um and switch code switch everything case may be because of ignorance of other people that's Mm. the stress i have with that Mm. because that baby could like no telling with that little child i'm glad he's got he's in he was in the home that loved them and wanted to raise them and make them be a better person. He should be around maybe 15 now, you know? Mm. So I need to see if I can find him. <laughs> yeah, check on him. But yeah, all of that is just like these assumptions of who you're going to be before you even have a chance to show people um, yeah. that holds us back. You know, having prejudice is a very judgment filled what did they say that they do okay let me avoid that before you even allow yourself to have an experience that is different from what you heard Mm -hmm. and when it comes to discriminating against a group of people um it makes people feel not enough not accepted some people push back some people don't try at all some people um, have this uh, mindset that if you know my skin was a little bit lighter, or if I straighten my hair, or if I buy this car, or if I move in this neighborhood, or if I make this kind of money, or if I marry this person, then they'll accept me, then they'll see me. 
And a lot of times it backfires in a way where people get to a point where they realize it's not enough too late and you're in a situation and you created children to then have to live in the situation you created thinking you are going to change how people think about you as a whole. You are going to force someone to accept you and treat you just. And it's not working. And this whole racial bias against Black people doing everyday things when other ethnicities are allowed to do them without a second thought that you're in the store because there's something you need and you're going to buy. Where we walk in the store and it's go watch them. Go ask them what they're looking for. Go follow with up with them three no, minutes. I, I don't mean like it don't, and the thing is not the intent. It's the like I come ask me what I'm looking for. Ask me if I need help. Mm -hmm. But the because once again, if you've been rush your profile in the store, it's the worst, especially when you have money. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, like I don't. That's a, that's why I don't shop at Best Buy anymore. Mm. I would love to be in Best Buy right now. I ain't gonna lie, Best Buy, Best Buy, you would get thousands of dollars out of me right now. I just built a house, Playboy, mm -hmm. but y'all won't see a dime of it because of how you treat your employees. Mm. I'm gonna tag y'all in this too, but because <laughs> I and I because I'm I love electronics. Yeah, I'm a podcaster. I'm a videographer. I'm a photographer. I'm a mm -hmm. gamer. And the thing is, because and that's the thing, racial labeling, mm -hmm. it don't only affect the people that you're doing. It's gonna affect you too. Yeah. It affects everyone. It, nobody wins in the situation. You know, it really doesn't. Being a bigot, what does that do for you? Right. It, it, it's, it's, it's just, I really don't like it. That's, it's, that's it's sad. It's a, a empty, you know, feeling of you don't have anything left to justify why you're treating someone like this. So you're banking on this is what's going to stop you. This is what's going to hurt your feelings. This is what's going to make someone limit you from being able to do what you think you're going to do. And we see it all the time. And laws are being created as we speak with social media and what you can do. These accusations that people are making um, on Black people are going to be limited in our future. And, you know, just calling the police because your neighbor is outside and they have visitors and they're outside and you're not supposed to be gathering on, you know, Lord. your porch or in your driveway or, you know. But you got to understand, how, what, what, where does this country come from? What, what is this based off on? The slavery and owning people and taking people's land. But what kind of people? Displacing black people, colored people. Like the the word black did not all it it was not always black. It has evolved to be oh, black. If we go all the like I never shout out to my uncle Rambo, my uncle Chuck, okay. You know, These I names never, like you know, his reason, you know, he served in the military when you, you know, his reason to call him Uncle Rambo, okay? Rambo. But so he served. He served his country. Yeah. Him and his, his father, his siblings, to yeah. get a better space here in this country, earn respect to show, like, hey, I'm a citizen just like you. I have a family. All these things, when you judge me, I remember asking him when I first started doing Everything Culture. I'm talking about when Everything Culture was a baby, when it was still on the nip. Still like being on a nip, by the way. But when it was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> and I asked him, like, man, you know, he was, you know, raised in the 60s and things. You know, what was it like? You know, what do you like to be identified as? He like, I don't care. You know, they didn't call me everything from Negro, um, you know, black, colored. Uh, and these are he said, I didn't check all the boxes. This this is what they put on black and white. Negro, um, black, colored. He went that other thing, you know, and I'm like African American. He like, 
I'm just me. I'm from Ennis, Texas. You know, you talk, you know, I, I need to have him on the show. But it was real like that was one of the first time like me thinking about that, like, dang. He said they could call me what they want to call me anyway. That's true. And I will say this. Um having two Jamaican parents who are not born in this country and coming here. And I tell my friends who are born and raised here all the time, if you go to Jamaica and somebody asks you where your family from and you said, I'm black, my family is from America, they're going to laugh at you and they're going to think that you're not that intelligent. Because America is the only place that when you talk about family and who you are, the first answer is racial, not ethnic and culture based. And other countries, when they ask you that, they want to know your root. They want to know what country your people are from. They want to know what languages are native to your people so they can make a connection. English. Okay. <laughs> so, 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 so I don't see why uh, this is a conversation. I don't see why we think it's stupid because yeah, one, but, but, it's but, like, but it's like with Jamaican, you can't say, "Oh, we're y'all are African just like us." Y'all just dropped out first, so we can say we're American. You right, know what I mean? but they they when they say it, it's kind of like this sense of belonging when they're born and raised there. Right? Because y'all allowed to have that belonging. Remember, right. even though we were born and raised here, we still are being objectified and racially labeled here. That's right. the problem. But this we is should be thing. able to say we're American and say it proudly, but since we're treated as, it has been from the beginning see, treated as not even second class citizens to start right. out with, but as lesser beings. And yeah. then we, once again, civil rights is just for them not the right to spin on us. And then, like, we're still fighting. So when, like, especially at the old age, when they may say that, because mm -hmm. I'm from America, but I'm black. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's like, a, it shouldn't be there, once again. But, it, like, and a lot of us are getting to that point. Like, like when I say, when I own Juneteenth, when I say, I'm a, it's that asterisk that's right there. Mm -hmm. Because, like, same thing when, when I was here, go back to Africa. You go back to Europe. When you go back to Europe, we go back to Africa. How about that? Yeah. But yeah. that mindset, because that's what someone with other countries, like, we, we I, I can't, I'm still in a certain place when I'm working now, but have people from different countries that don't understand the plight of the African, the American descendant of slavery. Okay. Because there has to be a level of grace that you give Black Americans and understand how they got to a point where th this is how they identify because these things in history has happened. You said grace and education. Yeah. Because I was watching, I don't know, you probably sent it to me here on TikTok or IG, but yeah. it was an African woman talking about why we just, black people need to stop talking about slavery because it's, it's done, racism doesn't exist. Shut up. Go on now. Because just like you don't, once again, if you don't know the history and the things are still happening now in this country, live in effect, you ain't gonna care. I think black people okay. being in a level of what they deem, I'm great and I can do all the things my wife. My white uh, counterparts can do what you're dealing with as a black person is so below me it doesn't exist are harmful to the culture of black people because it gives people this illusion that oh all i have to do is make a certain level of money or live in a certain uh a certain lifestyle to not be affected by these things that i am around me and that's not true so for instance in different culture and in, in, in different countries okay different continent countries however you want to put it um uh, well in different continents where they have different countries and different cultures and behaviors a lot of the difference span on the 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 money poverty okay poverty luxury riches um income sometimes they still base it off of um tri tribals 
be um where you come from, last name if that time. But we talk about once again, go back to what we was talking about earlier, the point of race to be created. Yeah. This create racism to create division that make a separation to make people oh, feel better for themselves. Mm-hmm. So when I say that, <clears throat> excuse me, when I say that, y'all don't have to deal with race. Well, I don't say a lot of something I did, but race was created here in this country to put create a, a, a servitude of people for mm-hmm. no apparent reason. Yeah. And there are other countries that do deal with race because Americans have been traveling. Because there. American have yeah. done, it. and so, they have taken those uh, ways of control and maneuvering people yes. through racial biases. So if you if you're in a certain space, yeah. like for instance, I keep saying, if racism didn't exist, we will still have issues. I think that we all know that to be a common thing, okay. but it does exist. Right. It's like if you're working out, I can do 225. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm expecting I'm going to put some work in. Mm-hmm. But if you add two more plates that they say racism, I'm like, whoa, mm-hmm. why this? Because guess what? After I finish, just like in America, because still, after we still, the, the, the biggest thing is getting them racism off my, I need, this, I need to make. I'm gonna use that for my training a module. For I'm gonna put that in a PowerPoint. I like that, um, because once you remove race, mm-hmm. I can start like these racial barriers. Then we mm-hmm. still got to deal with poverty. You still got to deal with the beauty standards that some still depend on race. But race add a whole different type of element to it. As a woman, y'all got a lot to lift because y'all got sexism and misogyny through it. Mm-hmm. Be mindful of these things. Yeah. It's another barrier, another weight that you're adding to people. But when you're dismissive, you over here lifting your 135, I'm like 315, you at 135. I don't see the problem. That's what right. it's like from right. a different a person from a different country. We may look like we both Coxwall and all that. We both look alike, but you're being very dismissive of what I'm lifting over here. Right. Ooh. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. Yeah, and it is is um I think the whole uh bridge that a lot of I can I say this because it's all it's it's percolating. And yeah. the thing is, I'm cause I may do a video that is so dope. So the thing is because when you lift in, and let's say you have them weight, them ball, them plates on you, mm-hmm. having allies and having people to support you help you get that thing off your chest sometimes right. too. Because going back to what we talked about last week, we get, the, the church was a big, we lifting it together. Yeah, the community. The community. It, when you, but now, when you ostracize yourself, they remove your church, have you going against having a spot and do it by myself. And they, that, that, and they ain't pulling away. That's when it will start breaking us down individually. And that's where it comes in that you're lazy, that you're not trying, that you're really not showing up, and you're making it up, and it's all in your head and you're being the problem and and we all know if you're in the gym that it's a mental thing too if you don't feel like you can lift the weight you ain't gonna lift the weight right and the whole time you feel i I used to say like once again i was looking at a bar i saw a guy lift something i I used to lift that in high school i can't lift it anymore (laughs) i'm older i ain't strong as i used to i see him over there struggling i said you know what i said let me try I ended up tossing it seven times. And he was like, you can do more. I like, just wanted to see I can do it. That confidence means a lot. Yeah. So with that racial labeling and stereotype, it, it defeats a lot. That's what going back to being the youth. It breaks down the confidence of the people. The people. And they do it at such an early age to us, too. From the, 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 the standardized testing to put in this class. What your teacher did. You're not like the rest of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, if one, what, I, what if I took that and carried it all throughout high school, college, workplace? What if one of the other, what if one of the other students back there that may have been trying to pay attention, but was being like heard that and feel like, well, I, what what does that make me? Yeah, it affects us all. It did. Then having another um student. 
them feel like, well, look at them. They're all horrible. Yeah. The, I, I never forget when I went to my, when I left my predominantly white middle school. Hey, we're doing the show, y'all. Uh, went, left my predominantly white middle school and went to my predominantly black high school. I had friends at the predominantly white um, high school from middle school. Mm-hmm. All of them, I never went, all of them were not white. They were all, I, I had a diverse set of friends. I always had. Same. Okay. But I never forget it was a math comp. Uh, it was a it was an algebra competition. Once again, your boy used to He's a nerd <laughs> alert. Big nerd. <laughs> I'm telling you, I used to be like that. I used to get my homework done before I got home. Turning it at the end of the class while everybody else playing. And I would be on it. I need to get back to that. Yeah. But never forget went through the the competition. And I try to holler at one of my friends, like, man, what's up? She's a- Mm. Turn his head, went to talk to other people. I like what? Yeah. Dude, like we used to study together. I used to I ended up man, but it it could have broke me. Mm-hmm. But I ended up winning the competition. I don't I didn't win, but I ended up beating all of them in the competition. Mm-hmm. Slaughtering them because of that. And I'm it was like almost like don't forget who I am. Mm-hmm. Because I'm and don't forget my peers who are with me, what we're here to do. But even with my black friends, they went through that program. They thought they were, and it's like that. Yeah, oh, that. See that. See, I'm gonna have to make that episode for hometown conversations because they still be fighting that high school rivalry, and I'm like, y'all, y'all, with y'all. Listen, they stuck. Set up. Y'all hang with, yeah, you know what your school, the, the legacy, the legacy of your school, right? majority of our schools the names of our schools they didn't even want to change and it i came in with black folks well we got to change the name of the school you know the school used to come out with the confederate flag during pep rallies when they played the black school right wow. and it used to be a bunch of race riots behind y'all know this right that's the legacy of the school that you represent and ooh, i don't want to talk about it <laughs> They don't want to talk about it. But these are the conversations <laughs> they don't want to have, you know. Um, the racist rants that people go on on social media, um, it does not help uh, stop racism. It, it, it promotes it and the people that comment under it, we see, and those could be your your business owners in your community, your teachers. Police your officers, judges, lawyers, attorneys. Your judges um the people Dennis. who are babysitting your children how they single out children at pre-k how they single out children in uh gyms to talk to them about their grades and how they're not being enough and if you don't pass this test then you're you're going to fail you know uh the way the cafeteria is set up uh I mean, it's 2023. There are still states that have segregated proms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know if you I think, you know, on IG, you always engage with my um, posts and conversations, but it was a little boy that was shaking up a soda can, and he, like, rubbed the sides of the can, and he was going to open it, and he was doing this while his parents were recording, okay? He was telling his parents that, hey, it's not going to fizz up. Trust me. And he was like, relax, mom. Like, yeah, I got. And like, you know, just showing and, and it and it opened. I mean, and it opened, but it didn't spray everywhere. Okay. I stitched it. I was like, man, must be nice. Cause I was like, you you was gonna you was gonna get your head tapped one way or another. <laughs> so it, because if it if it would have sprayed everywhere, it's for yeah. messing up the house. Yeah. And if it didn't, it's because you were right. You proved you made your parents look stupid. So you lose lose. So it's like it must be nice being a kid and doing that. Like that, like, like, like. so many responses. And this was a white child, okay? But so many responses from black, majority white, um, Asian, Mexican, all through. I love it. Because people are we're talking, we're telling about different perspectives and experiences. Okay. Yeah. We we got it, on both sides too, we got uh, white people say it must be hard. Your parents being that terrible and won't allow you to live. Black people saying the same thing. Your parents must be this, this, and that. Mess all the, then 
why you all oh, my parents would have tanned my hide. It would have been done. I would have been so gr- like it was grounded. All oh, like black men, every Mexican, like man, my I would have got everybody talking about their different perspectives and experience and sides. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of them disrespectful. Once again, I can tell the ones who never had hands put on before or never parents have done nothing, the ones that I like, I would love to introduce you to this life. But the what caught me was one, and I, you know, when you when your comments are gone like that, you can't respond to the crazy stuff. You just gotta let you don't, don't you know they tell you don't read, read the comments. Yeah. But it was one that caught my attention. Yeah, I yeah. say this is really sad for black parents not being able to do this. Made, she made it a race thing. No, everybody else wasn't really making a race thing. Maybe when a couple of them being trolled, but this one try to show her concern and makes black. And I was like, and I responded. I said, it's really sad that you label this as being black when if you look at any of the comments, you see the majority of people who would have been disciplined were white. Mm-hmm. But you made it. You labeled it. You labeled it. Mm-hmm. Nobody like everybody else having this a conversation sharing a perspective. Because once again, once again, parenting is parenting. It's no easy way. Mm-hmm. Not the right or wrong. Mm-hmm. But let me tell you, it was about respect. But the but the fact is that you try to make this up. You and you, verbatim was said in right a black parent thing. No, I had to correct that. I said you're going. To, that, you're the reason why I have my podcast. Yeah. And you could you completely missed the point. Skipped over all the responses. Hundreds of responses, Shan. Hundreds. To say, oh, and but guess what? I don't know what type of position this person has. And that's why I had to respond. I don't know what type of influence this person has. Mm-hmm. But I had to make sure to say, this is not representing all black people. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you know, and because once again. What I said does not represent, and that what that little boy did and how his parents treated does not represent all white people. It's just an example of what can happen in this world, and it must be nice. It must, it, it, it could be cool, because no telling what else has happened to that little boy. So we just looking at a little snippet right there. You know what bothers me, and I don't care what race or culture you are. People who can't think out of their own experience. Yeah. So what do everyone goes from? Because but in and that and that and that goes for us and too. It goes for us too. And that's why we're a spectrum. Seriously. Yeah, and then you know, like ugh, I've I've been around people who are black who think all white people are racist. Mm-hmm. Um I've been around black people that think all black people are racist too. That um I just I'm just like, damn, I just wish you would travel more. I wish you would um, get outside your box that you're limiting yourself in. Um, But some people just want to stay in the confines of what they're sure about and what they think they know. And um, you got to have that want to see more, want to experience more. Uh, want to know where something is stemming from to learn that one way is not the only way. And when it comes to what we see, all the energy is coming from a place, a teaching, a learning, a habit, a repetitive mindset of, I feel just doing this to someone else because of what I saw my dad go through when I was growing up or um, what my mom said or what my uncle said or what someone did to my sister months ago they look like somebody like you so let me handle this situation like this and all and of that precious. yeah all of that not put in its proper place is just transferred energy transferred energy um that's not unloaded in a responsible manner that just keeps uh, duplicating itself. And every time we're scrolling through media and we see anything, whether it's like a body cam assault, uh, someone shopping and being black, and that's why they're being talked to at the side of the store. Someone just spent 
hundreds of dollars in Nike and now they're outside and all their bags are being gone through because someone thinks they took something when they took nothing. Right. They're just black people with too many bags that usually black people can Dri- from driving a nice car. Yeah. Once again, I live like let me tell you. So somebody tried to invade our home. Thank you for the lights. Somebody mm-hmm. tried to invade our home. I had to call the sheriff's house. I stay in that gated community. Mm-hmm. Like you had to put a gate in. Uh, I mean, a code in, got cameras at all the places. I don't have the best relationship with majority of police, the, the system of policing, okay, yeah. up here in America. Yeah. And this is the reason why. A gentleman came out. Well, I can call him a gentleman. An officer came out. Mm-hmm. Um, Not black, not white. First thing was like, oh, first question, like, you know, well, you know, you stay here, this is on and on. Like, yeah, um, you know, this is my name. Of course, that's the name that was left. Okay. Uh, ooh, how much these houses going for around here? I said a lot. That's a focus. Yeah, yeah. I said, I said a lot. Oh, I expect this, this, and this. You know that. And I'm like, you expect you're gonna have this. You know, you. It, it was just like real judgy. Judgy. Like, why didn't you handle this? I, better? I, I felt more jealousy than anything else. Yeah. I know. Once again, I ain't stupid, and you know, not they want to shake a the hand. They want to be courteous. I'm like, so I had to, okay, F the nice stuff, because I'm cool with a lot of officers, but once again, I know a lot of buttholes that expect, they have expectation where they should be in life, yeah. but why this black man have it? Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing about it, and I, you would think it's not like that, but you, it's it's been said about around closed doors. Yeah. Like, it, it's, it, and, and that's, it just really turned me sideways, you know, I'm like, <sighs> Here we go. <laughs> now I just gotta watch out for, you know, like even driving, like make sure, hey, they're gonna be looking for me. I drive a nice car. Mm-hmm. You know, I live in a nice neighborhood. Now it's predominantly like everywhere around it, predominantly black. It, like everywhere around here is predominantly black. You see black people everywhere. Mm-hmm. But in my neighborhood, so far, we're the only black people here. Well, I take it, it's another black couple here. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And that's what we talk about sometimes, being around each other, too. But we have to pay attention, going back always to Amos and Andy. A lot of behaviors that was created, that racial profiling, that race, that discrimination, not discrimination, I apologize, but the, the stereotypes that's been created that people um, racial label us with didn't even come from us. Right. Now, you know, there's some things that come from us that it's like we still don't expect all of us going to do it. Right. Like every black person is not going. I don't. I don't like hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> see, look, look, see, look. Something like see, and we got to talk about some of the positive. We talk about the positive stereotypes we labeling. Every black person is supposed to know how to dance. Every black person knows how to dance. Every black person is supposed to know how to play basketball. I suck at basketball. I tell people straight up, I got two left ankles. I got two, I got a left and right. Every black person is supposed to play spades because I don't play spades and I don't want to learn. <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> see, see. See, we see you taking it too far. You taking it too far. You took it to, we was having a good productive conversation right here. <laughs> yeah, uh, man. We got, we got to have some things that, you know, like it goes back to that point. <laughs> we, how much progress have we truly made where we don't need to have, <laughs> know how to know how to play spades anymore? Like, that's what I'm learning. Like, yeah. it must be real nice we made it that far in life. It, we our ancestors. We have Uno. No, we phase 10. Phase 10 is created by a black man. You know, and we don't, and this thing, see, that's the other thing about it. We, see, we could keep going back and forth so with black folks, man. Uno, the dude that made, the people who made Uno try to tell us the rules, we're like, we ain't going to do that shit. Yeah. <laughs> we ain't about to listen to y'all. Oh, man. Hey, we well, y'all gonna, like, we can't, we could do what we, uh. hey, that's the beautiful thing about us. Yeah. But I love that even with the labeling, we still continue to defy the odds.
This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. I'm happy for people finding joy in the holidays coming up. Family being around. We love all of that, okay? Working a job that brings you fulfillment sounds great and it must feel amazing. But that's not everybody's story. What's not amazing are the people hiding that they are not happy behind a smile and they don't know what to do to fix it. People who are battling depression every day and need a little bit more help. Their lives are not that great, but no one knows it. We are all going through things, and some people need more help than others, and they need convenient, flexible help. And you can get that today with using BetterHelp for online therapy. Use my link, betterhelp.com backslash she gets it pod for 10% off your first month of therapy. Get the help you need today. Thank you for checking out She Gets It Pod. If you would like to support this podcast, you can always donate at our host, Red Circle, at redcircle.com or the link in the show notes. You can also find the Better Help uh, link in the show notes. And you can support by purchasing anything you would like off of She Gets It Shop with Teespring. Now back to the show. We still continue to prove people wrong, show us who we are and what we can accomplish. Yeah. Um, if they try to diminish us on our creativity, yeah, our intelligence, our strength, our, our athleticism, our faith in total. Mm. And and that's something that I can say that many people may disagree with. But I said a label that we can put on us is resilient. Mm-hmm. They hate our resilience. Okay. They, they, ain't, they ain't supposed to know it. But when I'm talking about resilient, the type of stuff that we've been through, mm-hmm. the type of things that we're going through. Yeah. And the type of things that we will face in the future, too. Because it's not over. No. You know, I wish I could wake up tomorrow and say, oh, all the problems gone. Listen. No, it's not like that. So, you know, we got to be grateful for that, you know, mm-hmm. but truly, truly, truly. Um, Question. What do you feel like promotes, what are the top factors that you feel like promotes racism? Control, jealousy. profit mm. once again history of racism okay if i like they back then racism used to be profitable yeah for certain people i think racism is still profitable i i there's no it, way but it could it, it it is to a sense but you would make a lot more money bringing people together giving people what they want and making them happy Every, once again everybody could win that's why yeah. I, I led yeah. that's why i led with control at the end of the day it's about control and yeah. jealousies follow from that because it's just like how some men and women men want to control women because women are capable and able to do so much so i got to keep you feeling like you're lesser than yourself because if you knew your true worth you may not you may not want me because they're scared of someone wanting to be there with them because of them and being truly there for them it has to be you need money that's why you're here because that makes me feel more secure because i'm the one only one that has it It it's very like damn i wish you loved yourself a bit more to know that i'm not here for that let me let me tell y'all this let me tell you so i'm in certain words I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna be quiet. You know, yeah. Cause this show gonna come out later. Are you, if it was coming out today, I wouldn't say this. <laughs> but we're talking to a a white man, and yeah. he was sharing his perspective on DEI. And I, I hear this from a lot. I talk conversations, everything culture, mm-hmm. and he shared that. His thing with DEI, he know he don't feel like he's invited to certain spaces. He felt like DEI is discriminatory against him. That was a red flag for me. Yeah. But you centering yourself. 
I mean, you ain't been paying attention to what he's talking about. You should not center yourself. Yeah. But he made a statement talking about how allyship, you know, usually needed. And he said, you know, a lot of these places, you know, if we don't have a lot allyship, you wouldn't get to where you need to be. And I was like, I would, I'd say if I wasn't in the space that I was in, I would have definitely like, what did you mean by that? Mm-hmm. Because what I, I can tell you what I interpreted from there. Mm-hmm. That me, as a white man, you still need me because I created these barriers. And to get through these barriers, you need someone like me to help you get through them. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm like, do you want to be? You know, I didn't hear want at all. Mm-hmm. I heard that you need us. Yeah. That, that, and that, that was something I, it, it, it spoke volumes to me. Volumes to me. Mm. So that right there is to a point where I would say, we don't, like, you're going to bring all the back. We can be friends, but I don't need you. Right. I want you as a friend, but I don't need you as a friend. I would want you as an ally, but I don't want to. You you putting your position, you're putting yourself in a position of need. You're putting yourself in a position of being able to leverage me as a person. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm, that's like you flat my tire and then you offer me your tire services. Or I'll tow your car, you just need to pay me this much. You take it, once again, you take it either way you want to take it. <sighs> but yeah. And this was just like, you know, 2023 things. What we do, but that's why we're having conversations like these, Shane. The work is still needed, baby. I want the hierarchy of uh, racism to go away, the passive aggressive attitudes to go away. You know how I make it go away? I've been, hey, you go back to season one of Everything Culture. Are you giving us the solution already? Reparation. Pay us what you owe. I got all this money to give to other countries. 14.6 today. Make it Pay make us. sense. Once again, today still want to control us. Yes. It's, it's like They're being, scared it's, of letting go. What will they do if we do this? Black people in America is like being, it's like we were married. And but being a woman, they don't sign the divorce papers. Yeah, and don't want them signing. <laughs> don't want to give up the um the alimony, the child support, and sign the papers. You can go, but you ain't getting nothing. Right. You ain't get the last name. Don't get nothing. Nah, it don't work that way. I've been saying this is years, oh, but if you pay as well, oh, like man, hey, you pay once again. Hold on, is it muted? Y'all, y'all listening? If if you pay if you pay out truthfully and you know black people are not taxed for the next two hundred years no no tax okay and you pay us the forty no tax. stand on business y'all ain't standing on business right I probably y'all can call me then where all you want to you pay you pay all that little stuff like <laughs> I'm, I'm still gonna check you about the disrespect you know yeah. But, a lot of that offense stuff, I, oh, I'll i be less offended. Like, nah, nah, nah. Pay me with, give me Some my taxes and uh, life, uh, life insurance policy that's good. That come to us. Yeah, it got to come to us. Cause they'll, they'll, be taking, they'll be taking us out left and right if that was the case. It goes to the government. Let me tell you that. I'm saying like us, but we ain't got to pay for it. It's just, you got it. But let me tell you, pay the reparations, and you see how peaceful things will become. Thanks. And but see how you start getting ignored more. Mm. See how you, you talking about you don't you tell me y'all get mad at BET. Imagine having a whole hot black Hollywood in Atlanta in Houston. Tyler Perry already working on it. Yes, sir. But I'm telling you, because if you give us that true power. Because, you know, if you give us our reparation, we'll have resources to protect ourselves this time, too. They won't feel needed. Once again, it's been plenty of communities that's been built that's been Black-led, but it's always been infiltrated. You better pay attention to the native, the indigenous people of this country. Yeah. Because it was a whole, it was thousands of languages spoken on this land before. Okay. 
How many languages of indigenous people do you know of? How many Native Americans you heard? How many? Name three. Name, name one. Anybody, anybody, anybody. No, no, man. Pay attention. All I'm saying. And you know how they really tore down. The, well, you know, because once again, we talk about the code. We talk about black people. We got to talk about indigenous. I'm, I'm like that. But if you look at the history, how did they infiltrate them? They turned them against one another. Yeah. Oof. So the black impact is evident. Turn on your Wi-Fi. Okay, we know that. Um, the solution would be people understanding their privileges. Mm. Um, people being financially thoughtful, knowing who you're spending your money with and what that company uh invest in what they're for what they're privately uh purchasing um there's a lot of electrical companies insurance companies um auto companies who have private meetings and invest in private owned prisons that have a majority of black people in them uh, mm. making you. billions per year that help fund their companies and help their generational wealth. And they also have, you know, the phone call of politicians and those politicians sit in those rooms and make those laws that make it easier to line their pockets. And once we start understanding like how to connect for out here, we'll start deciding, okay, I could go into this store and buy this, but there's also this store here that will bring this money back into my community or represent something I believe in. Um, understanding your own biases towards black people and why they're there and how you can undo those. Um, being willing to understand other people's feelings, even though you, you're feeling like you didn't do something. If somebody says, I feel this when you did this, accept that. Stop centering yourself. Okay. If, somebody, okay. if, if Shannon's telling me how she feels and what she's going through, my responsibility as a friend and somebody who actually care is not to tell you, girl, guess what's going on with me? Right. Or no, you're not feeling that. I have to correct my daughters every day. They're very petty. Okay, we was in five and below today. They was about to squabble, and I'm the only one spending the money. Okay, so um, you just gotta no. nip it. You gotta nip no, that in the bag. No, your uh, role mom. Stand on. Yes. <laughs> Stop saying you don't see color. I hate that so much. You do. Everybody does. Just respect it. Yes. Respect my culture. That's it. Okay. Um, know that a racist joke is a racist joke. So I'm trying to take it back and make it funnier because it's not. Okay. And if you think we didn't hear it, we heard it. Nobody okay. just laughed. <sighs> okay. And education and housing discrimination is still going on in rampant. Do we want to talk about foster care? How private privatization of the system in Harris County has gone into effect. Mm. Y'all go to see it more on the news. Y'all and, and educate yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And having one friend of any ethnicity is not enough. It doesn't it doesn't give you the say so to speak for them or right. the culture. Right. I think your awareness of self matters. Um, racism is created to divide people, not bring people together. Yep. Um, get out your ignorance. And Native people were not dictating the worth of people based on their race. Okay, so that is not something that was in this country initially. That is something that was brought here and thought through to hold people back, to separate families. Um, if you are one of if you are one of those lucky, wealthy people 
who still have grandparents and great grandparents talk to them. Talk to them, have discussions with them, share thoughts with them and have them talk to you. And if you do podcasts, record with them because a lot of people out here don't have grandparents. They don't have great grandparents. They don't have those stories. They don't have those pictures. They don't know their culture. Um, if they wanna research it, they would have to pay money. And these companies are doing different things with different information. So I just say, be mindful, be aware, um, think through, why am I upset that someone is able to live here? Why am I upset that this person's child is able to sell cookies here? How is this affecting me going from point A to point B today? Does this deserve a police call? Why is this child in this hoodie playing at the playground bothering me so much? Just think about it. Like, it's not that serious. Uh, even like for the past I mean, two let's weeks. Let's clarify, that child, the hoodie is not bothering you. You're bothered by them. Yes. Let's clarify that. Yes. And if you like, did. Why, why do that, their presence bother you? Yeah, if they if you did say that on the call, you know that police officer and that dispatcher is not coming. They're not showing up. So you got to make this something that is not in order to get someone out here to fulfill your need, to make you feel validated. You know, um, I've, I've been feeling very guilty uh, being able to watch the news and what's going on in Palestine and uh, getting, getting the backstory on why for the past few years that this has been a thing. Um, years. You years. 10 years. This, this has been going on since I was a child. 10 years. Since but before it, we were born. Right. But it wasn't nothing that's in front of your face like it is now for me. Um, and, and just, just like the propaganda is so like dehumanizing to me. Oh, um, oh, once again. Once again, that's when that's a we you I'm listening. I listen to you. If it's, I start it's, on it's, that. It's, that will be another hour and a half. It's um, and I know this is about us black people, but this is about being human also. And it's about how people choose to separate when they will treat other people in a humanizing manner and when they don't. But that's, that's why it's a problem. That's why it's free Palestine. Because people game being a black person, if you don't understand what's going on here, you really disconnected from our culture and our history and our roots. Yeah. It's sad. The stuff that people don't like watching documentaries of, they ain't gonna try to watch this either. Yeah. Pay attention what they're doing to these people. Right. But no, you really watch Barbie. <laughs> what's going on with Christian and Blueface? Right. What's happening with the Bad Girls Club? What's on Zeus? What did Jada Blueface? say today? Yeah, Jada and Will. Oh my God. Did the Lakers win? Mm. How the Cowboys doing? How about them Cowboys? Pay attention what's happening to people and human beings, yo. Where's Drewski? Drewski's hilarious. He's in Houston. How are we about to become one of the poorest countries? Let me tell you something. Before I ain't gonna get into that, Chan, you gotta stay on task. We're talking about black. I'm trying, but is it, I'm I'm saying these things to say like what? I said one more, hey, you pay us all right for the, rep, rep, pay black folks their reparations. Watch we flip that. Yes, so we go pay. A lot of us go give it right back to you. Dave Chappelle said it a long time ago. Y'all get it back immediately, almost. I, I got two cousins go buy two 18 wheelers in Newport, so don't even trip about that. A lifetime supply in Newport? You think it's a lie? Oh my God. We need this to, like, we all need to come time. together and talk about if we actually receive reparations again. Just the dream. That is like, uh. Didn't we talk about that? I know, I know I talked about it in the early episode with some more folks. I don't know if we are, we may have talked about it. Did we do that for our Thanksgiving episode a couple years? Was yeah. that last year, a couple years I ago? Mean, I don't know if we did, but we should. 
Yeah, Bailey in here. We, 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 we think talk. we should do a things uh, uh, Friendsgiving um, pod. Absolutely. That'd be fine. Absolutely, we need to bring that back. Thanksgiving. Heck yeah, a lot. heck yeah, we gonna do it. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah. All right, y'all tune in for that. But Shan, thank you so much. This is episode five of She Gets a Pod and Everything Culture. My name is Shan. You can find me at shanbpodden.com. And she gets a pod on Mondays weekly. We drop a show. I appreciate you. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. If you don't like it, don't take it. Um, if they got animals, resist. Um, and if the yams are not yammy, wrong mm. house, wrong time. Mm. And dressing over stuff. Believe that. You know what I'm saying? And as always, we'll leave y'all with the mission statement of everything culture. Um, and that is, it comes in the words of Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. And he ex- preached before that he believed that men hate each other because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because of segregation. And because of segregation, we have miscommunication. So this podcast has been built on the pillars of respect, communication, and consistency. So we can get to know each other, so we can love one another. So I want to say thank you all. Have a great holiday. We ain't celebrate no pilgrims. And peace. We out. Here are our takeaways from today's topic. My takeaway from this episode is if you feel like someone's going to be offended by what you say or how you say it, don't say it. Um, If you feel like somebody's going to be uh, offended by how you do something or how something looks, just don't do it. I I just don't understand why people do things that they know are going to incite different views and thoughts in other people that look different from them and they continue it. And then they just look around like they're the ones with the issue. Be thoughtful before you speak. Be thoughtful before you do things out of emotions. Um, And I know in a workplace, people just feel comfortable because they think they're all on the same level of work. Or in a friend group, people feel like they should be able to do X, Y, and Z just because they're exposed to a certain surrounding and that's not realistic. Black people are who they are and they look how they look, just like you are who you are and you look how you look. Don't treat us differently based upon those things and just be a better individual. Thank you so much for checking out the episode.